The word Islam, let's look at that word. We're doing a little bit of etymology before we get into our subject, but Islam itself, what is that? And in the West, we have some of the Muslims who are so defensive and afraid, you know, from the media, from the governments, and uh, shy, apologetic almost. You know, are you a Muslim? Well, yeah, almost. I mean, you know, I'm not really serious about it. So, <laughs> but when you ask, well, what is Islam? And they'll say, peace. Islam is peace. They're not totally wrong, but they're not totally right either. When we greet each other, we usually say what? And in our speech today, I didn't do that yet, so I'll do it now. Salam alaikum. Wait a minute, hold on. I got three microphones, five microphones here, six. One more microphone, I can be a CIA agent. <laughs> well, anyway, never mind that. But uh, let me hear you. Salam alaikum. There we go, you woke up, huh? All right. Now, we did not say Islam alaikum, did we? So Islam doesn't mean peace, does it? Salam is peace. There is the word peace within the root from where this comes. Islam is a noun, it comes from the verb, aslama. Aslama means the surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and being in peace after you've done the other four. So this has a lot of conditions in it. Now some people would say, I don't think your religion is tolerant. Is Islam tolerant? The answer is no, absolutely not. Allah will never tolerate that people will make partners with Him in worship. The word Islam is directly talking about Allah and His creation. That's what it's talking about. Now if you understood that, it's not talking about more than that, it's talking about specifically that, clearly. There, listen to the words. Again, surrender. We Muslims are getting good at that. Afghanistan, Iraq. <laughs> Submission. You're going to give in. You're going to cave in. Whatever it is, you're giving up. Obedience. And this is not just conditional obedience. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Because the next word is sincerity. And this is the proof... This one part of this word Islam is the proof that nobody can be forced into Islam. Nobody can be forced in conversion. Islam can't be spread with a sword and it can't be spread with a, a tank or a machine gun because it requires sincerity and you can never force people to be sincere. It's totally voluntary from the beginning. Understand the word, you understand the whole thing, and it ruins and destroys the arguments of these so called experts on terrorism and debaters. You know, they don't want me on the Oprah show for a reason. Because <laughs> they don't have any show next week. No, one of the things that we see in the West is people make a lot of money bashing Islam. If you say there's going to be a show on, let's say, Oprah Winfrey or Phil or Dr. or whoever is going to have a show, He's going to talk about Islam. All the Muslims right away will tune in. Well, out of the one and a half billion Muslims in the world, even if 10% of them, even if 1% of them tune in, the ratings for that station go right through the roof. So of course they like to talk about Islam. And they say, we're going to have this man will talk for Islam, this man will talk against Islam. We'll bring somebody here as a professor of Islam. He's a PhD of Islam, and uh, we'd like to welcome uh, our Jewish rabbi, his name is, you know, and he's got PhD in Islam, he's going to talk about. Okay, so now you're going to have everybody watching and getting excited about this, and this is going to be, oh, he said this, well, yeah, that's true, but no, and he said that, oh, that's not right, but still. And the whole idea is not the outcome of this. The idea behind the promoters is to get you to watch a show and buy the products, and that's what they want. If you watch the show, the advertisers will give them more money for the next show. It's as simple as that. That's how it works. I've been in this long enough to know exactly how it goes. 
And this is not an exaggeration, it is the exact story. So let's come back now and examine this word Islam a little bit more. You're talking about the description of a verb that is clearly the relationship between two entities. You have two entities or more. Because you can't submit to nothing. There has to be two. One is the submitter, another one is the one being submitted to. One is the obeyer, that's not a real word, don't write it down. The, the one who is obeying and the one who is being obeyed. And we begin to understand now that this must be the ultimate one to obey because of the structure of this word, it means Almighty God. So it is the relationship between the human beings, the jinn, all of the creation and Almighty God. And the creation has to do what He wants it to do except for us because He gives us choices.